secrets revealing Revelation 3. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. Anybody need a revelation? Well, praise God, it's right here. <laughs> Revelation 3. Revelation 3.14. Revelation 3.14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. It's like Jonah got vomited out of the mouth of a fish. Right now the body is being taken from a lukewarm position to a hot position. And there are many who, luke, who are very lukewarm and don't even know it. They think they're okay. But if you're not willing to do whatever it takes to please God, you're lukewarm. If he's not first, you're lukewarm. And he's bringing the body out of a lukewarm position into a hot position. Again, because the bride is in the body and not every one of the body is going to make it. Verse 17. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire. These are nuggets from God. These are nuggets of revelation from God that you partake. And when you partake of these, you change. But you do not reach these without a full denial of self. You do not access these things that are precious to God. He will not share these things that are precious with you if you are still lukewarm. There's a place of reaching hot. It takes denial yourself. It takes a willingness to do whatever it takes. It takes a place of worship. Worship. It takes a place of sowing. If you can't sow, you ain't reaping. What keeps a fire going? Breath. And when you sow, there's something else released. Oil and wine. Keeps a fire blazing. He says, I counsel you. In other words, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be what? Rich. Rich with his goodness. Rich with knowing him. and Rich with revelation. And white garments. Why? Because when you get in a place like this, your garments change. They become garments of righteousness. That you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Un and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may what? See. See, these nuggets of revelation bring sight. They're pure, they're holy, they're righteous, they're true. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It means he's knocking on everybody's heart, saying, let me in and let me have all of it. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. What a blessing. Also, I... As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is where we are right now. 
You know, so many people are going, where are we? What's going on? What's happening? In this place where God turns the church from lukewarm to hot, it's a purification process. It's a what? It's a purification process. In Psalms 15, Psalm 15. So the church is in a purification process. It's in a process of coming out of lukewarm to hot. It's in a process of exposing all kinds of defilement, corruption, things that displease God, filthy garments. In verse 1 it says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill or <laughs> who may dwell with you. He gives you a guideline. He says, he who walks uprightly, who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his own heart, in his own heart, doesn't blame, doesn't accuse, doesn't, doesn't re reflect their, their garbage on somebody else. Takes responsibility. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised. In other words, he knows the difference in the area of wickedness and righteousness, cleanness, uncleanness, purity, and unevenly yoked. But he honors those who fear the Lord. Those who fear the Lord. Let me tell you, worshipers should be those who fear the Lord. Not worshipers of self. We don't worship the music. We don't worship the words. We worship the word. Amen. There's a difference. But if you can't worship, there's a, it's impossible for you to come out of a lukewarm. You'll stay cold or lukewarm. Again, that's why the Lord commanded forsake not to assemble. Well, you can come to every service there is and not participate and sit there like an idiot and watch the presence of God go by and not participate. And not sing the words. You can stand there like a statue. And believe me, you won't be preserved. Whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He swears to his own hurt, not, does not change. He is consistent in doing the right thing. Doesn't mean he won't make a mistake, amen? He who does not put out his money at usury. Now, what is usury? How about drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, all kinds of other things that are unclean? Puts more money into it. It's not one who constantly is purchasing materialism. He does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. And he who does these things shall not be moved from the presence of God. Why? Because that is the place of protection. He who abides in his dwelling. This is divine protection. It's maintained by required cooperation. It's required cooperation. It's a purification process that we're going through. This is not head relationship. This is heart relationship. In Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. 
Everybody okay? Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> yes. Psalm 24, verse 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place again in his dwelling? He tells us, he who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. <laughs> who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Wow. Clean hands, pure heart. It's a pro it's a, that's the end result of a purification. Amen? He shall receive blessing from the Lord. Everybody wants to be blessed, but not everybody wants to pay the price to get blessed. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him and who seek his face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of the army. He is the King of glory, and his name is Jesus. A pure heart comes by trials of tribulations, resulting in a purification process. So what it does, it brings a pure sanctification. There's a lot of people trying to be sanctified, but it ain't pure. There's a defiling sanctification by many. Because they're, they've been set apart. They've personally set them apart, but they're still touching unclean things. They call themselves sanctified. People are trying to sanctify themselves in how they dress. It's a heart. Well, I don't drink no more. I don't smoke no more. I don't do this no more. I don't do that no more. But you still cuss. You still agree with things that are displeasing to God. You're still not consistent. And you don't sow enough. Sow enough on what? In the spirit. Why? Because that's what keeps the flames going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pure heart comes by trials and of tribulation resulting in a pure sanctification. A purification process by tribulation for sanctification. Again, we want to be set apart in purity, not just set apart. That's where all these false religions come from and all these rituals. People do all these rituals thinking they're sanctified. When they'll cut off your head in a second. They pray 16 times a day. To a demon. I don't even know it. Oh, they wear all these robes and all of these beautiful things. They dress up all their places. Thinking it's sanctification. That's not sanctification. It's sanctification of a pure heart. And it comes by trials, tribulations, and challenges. And how you respond to them. Or you react to them. What you submit to is what you become. Amen? Titus 2. Titus chapter 2. Purification process. Why? God has taken a lukewarm church, setting it on fire. Oh, happy days. Titus 2, verse 11. Glory. Let's speak it. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, doing what? teaching us are you willing to be taught or do you think you know it all already <laughs> or there's a lot of them
For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might, that he might, that word might means you must cooperate, might redeem us from every lawless deed, and purify, everyone say purify, for himself, his own special people. Not just sanctify, but purify. For what? Zealous for what? Good works, because they're on fire. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority, and let no one despise you or take your true identity. He says he's purifying for himself those willing to get close to him by the purification process and trials of testing and exposing. You know, one of the things he's exposing is our flesh and all demonic influence. Because the powers of enemy are always against us to disqualify us because it always takes something to qualify to get something. Amen. You must qualify for everything. Nothing is just released to you. There's a qualification for everything. There's a condition for everything. Everything has a condition. That's where the law comes from. What you sow is what you reap. So how much are you sowing? And I'm not talking about money. How much are you sowing of your life into the kingdom? Your life. It's amazing how, how many people started off sowing their life to the kingdom and then they've drifted. Now they're sowing their life into their own life. And in their own ways. And their own decisions. Everything is about them now. Oh, they show up and give a part, but then they take back. They give a part and then take back. Give a part and take back. Take back. So they're truly not in a position of purification. They won't allow God to purify them. They usually run. That's why many are called and few are chosen. Amen? They usually run or they look for another false fulfillment. He's setting apart for himself. He's purifying them. He purifies them by trials and tribulations and challenges. Not everything's going to go your way. In fact, in the purifying process, you can expect 80% not to go your way. <laughs> it ain't happening. But, 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 yes, that's butt ministry. Trying to get you out of the butt and into the head. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. In this place of the process of or purification process, which and then sanctification through your trials and tribulations and challenges and disappointments and rebukes and so forth. God is not only bringing us place from a lukewarmness or coldness, but in hotness and in a place of divine protection. It is divine protection. I'm telling you, nothing can touch you. Nothing. Only if you let it. Psalm 91, verse 1. Let's speak it. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the prevalence of pestilence of coronavirus. And every other plague or pestilence that tries to come to you, it may be knocking on your door, don't answer it. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. 
His truth shall be your shield. His truth, that's standing on his word. That's what blocks off every fiery dart. You're able to say no to that lie. You're able to say no to that feeling. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid. Hello. Or terrified of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day that's being shot at you every single day. <laughs> Nor of the what? Pestilence that walks in darkness. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. You shall not be afraid. You shall hide in the secret place. If you are a dweller in his presence. Qualified place of divine protection. Of those willing to be purified by their creator. It's called the furnace of affliction. It's a good day to cook. Hallelujah. There's going to be a lot of grilling going on today. <laughs> Isaiah 48. <laughs> Get the barbecue sauce out. <laughs> it's anointed. <laughs> Man, why do you smell like barbecue? I've been anointed today. <laughs> Isaiah 48. God, it got hot in here. Whew. Fire. Did you mess with the temperature? You did, didn't you? <sighs> Is anybody else hot? See, everybody's hot. Good. Let me know. It's cold. Well, you better get hot. Move it more this way toward me. Thank you. Yeah. Whew. Where did I say to go? Fire? Or Isaiah 28? 48? Isaiah 48. Is anybody there yet? Glory. In verse something. Nine. Verse nine. Isaiah 48, nine. Let's speak. For my name's sake, I shall defer my anger, and for my praise, I will restrain it from you, so that I do not cut you off. <laughs> Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the what? Oh, the furnace of affliction. Welcome. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. Listen to me, my people. Oh, Jacob, Israel, and total freedom and the house of truth. I am he, and I am the first, and I am also the last. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Whoa. And all you assemble yourselves and hear, who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall do his pleasure on Babylon. That's the kingdom of darkness. And his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him, and I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Qualified place of protection to those dwelling to be purified by the Creator. Awesome. They're going through the furnace of affliction. Amen. Psalm 34. Furnace of affliction. So you can understand that the whole body of Christ is going through this right now. Why? Because God is bringing the lukewarm into the fire. And he's purifying the purifiers. Psalm 34, verse 15. His way is better. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, it's, everybody's going through something, and what you're not going through, the enemy's trying to get you to go through. You know? So many people are, I'm struggling, and they're not even struggling with anything. They just say, I don't know what I'm struggling with. And why are you struggling? Who told you that? I don't know. I just feel like struggling. Who told you? I mean, I literally, people are freaking out all over the place. Man, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to die to yourself while being in the furnace of affliction. I'm getting calls from all over the place. They want to know what's going on. Man, what's going on? What do you think is going to happen? You're going to die <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> you hear the phone drop to the floor. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hopefully they're on their knees going, Mercy! Get out of the refrigerator. And those who are in the freezer of religion, frozen because they've been chosen to frozen. The frozen chosen, right? It's time to melt off the ice, get through the furnace of affliction, and get on fire for God. Glory. Verse 15, let's speak it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and he hear, his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord does what? He hears them and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a bro broken heart or a pure heart and save such as a contrite, contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Why? Because you're going through the furnace. Amen? But he delivers them out of all of them. Every one of them. He guards all his bones and none of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Did you hear that? Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Many of the afflictions are the righteous. And a purification process is testing of endurance, faithfulness, and discipline. Discipline is a key. Hebrews 24. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Let's go to First Peter chapter one. Woohoo! Hebrews, what are you crazy? Burabakasa Sharabakasia. Glory. Uh, where did I say to go? Oh, 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to find that Hebrews one, though. Must be hiding behind a cup of coffee. Peter chapter 1. Is everybody there? 1 Peter, even. Verse 3. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. Be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who, who are what? Kept by the power of God through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you need to be, uh, you know, you have to be grieved by little various trials. Various. That the genuineness of your faith, the quality of your faith, the quality of your connection, the purity of your heart, everything is being tested. How genuine you are as a Christian. Are you true? Are you faithful? Are you willing? which is being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. 
though now you do not see him, yet believe and you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your, self, your own end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Your genuineness, true, faithful, how genuine you are. Amen? Praise God. Psalm 119. going to see how cool you are or how hot you are or how lukewarm you are. It's a test from heaven. It's an eternal broadcasting system. Checking you out. Praise God. Amen? Glory. Okay, Psalm 119, verse 65. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 65. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now, many afflictions are brought on by our own stupidity. Amen. But now I keep your word. What does he say? Because I wasn't obeying your word. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in your word or your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted or brought into the furnace of affliction. That I may learn your ways or your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins in gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me what? Give me what? Understanding. Understanding. Understanding of what? Everything. Understanding of time and season. Understanding of things that are going on. Why aren't people not understanding? Because they're not connected. They're not connected. Amen? Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let I pray your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word to your servant and your tender mercies come to me that I may live for your law, your word is my delight, not my emotions. Is everybody okay? My word is his, his word is my delight. God is good all the way. Daniel chapter 12. Oh, happy days. Come on, Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, we're going to start at verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Time of trouble. Is there a time of trouble going on right now? But we haven't reached the big trouble. Because there's going to be a trouble that in the next verse it says, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And to that time your people shall be what? Delivered. God's people are going to be delivered through all of this if you're in the place, of purific if you're allowing the purification process. And you're in the divine protection. Everyone who's found written in the book. Are you in the book? And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Many of them on the earth shall awake. 
some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Are we at the time of the end? Yes. Many shall run to and fro, and technology shall increase, or knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this side of the river and one on the other side of the river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half time. In other words, three and a half years. This is tribulation. And he said, when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all things shall be finished. So we know that that is coming. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be what? Purified, made white and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So why do not the wicked understand? Because they're wicked. That's simple. Amen? Because they're what? Wicked. Why are the so-called believer doesn't understand? Because he's wicked. Does everybody understand this? Because there's still wickedness there. They haven't gone through the purification process. There's still wickedness. Everyone in this room should know, have a sense, that there's something going on. And you know what's going on. You can discern what's wicked and not wicked. You know the things that are pleasing God and not pleasing God. Amen? If you don't, you're wicked. That's real simple. But there are many who are called Christians that are stinking wicked. Because they promote those things that displease God. They are wicked. And they don't even know it. Well, I'm, I'm a believer. No, you're wicked. Amen? Does everybody understand? Why? Because they do not understand. Why is the veils on them? Because they're under the wicked one. Verse 11. And from the, from the time the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days, but you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. See, he said this was sealed to the end time. The end time here is being unsealed. Amen? God's un unsealing his purpose. He's bringing understanding. It's his timing right now. It's his plan, and judgment is here. Not his wrath, but judgment. We're only, listen, what you're seeing of this plague is judgment. It ain't wrath. Can you imagine what wrath comes? There's no healing in wrath. Amen? There's no healing in the wrath of God. There's either death, and people will cry out for death because they'll be afflicted by the plagues and pestilence during the wrath of God, but they will not be healed. It's the word says they will cry out to die, and they can't. Daniel 11. It's one chapter back. Glory, verse 29. Let's speak it. At the appointed time he shall return. This is the enemy shall return and go toward the south. But it shall not be like the former or the latter. For the ships from Cyprus shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and returned in rage against the holy covenant. 
and do damage. So he shall return and show regard for those who forsake the holy covenant. He's going to show regard. He's going to have mercy upon those who are willing to turn away from the Lord. He's going to make promises and all kinds of things. This is the Antichrist. And there are many Antichrists. Look at any person that's rejecting Christ as an Antichrist. I, won't, I, won't, I mean, that's real simple. They're under the sway of the wicked one because they are wicked. And it says, and the forces shall be mustered by him, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place their abomination of desolation. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. In other words, good job. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Why? Because they've been purified. They've been brought through the furnace of affliction. They dwell in the secret place. They're protected and they know their God. And their God knows them. And those are the people who understand shall instruct many. Why? Because the wicked do not understand. Yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by intrigue. Why? Because many are going to see. How come that person is not reacting like the other people. Does everybody understand? How is that? That person's integrity is different. That person's personality is different because we carry a new personality from above, not from beneath. Our integrity is different. It says in verse 35, and some of those, who un those of understanding shall fall to refine them purify them and make them white until the time of the end because it is still for an appointed time. Then the king shall be do, to do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, shall prosper till the wrath has been ac accomplished for what has been dis uh, determined shall be done. He shall regard neither God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above all them all. But in their place he shall honor a God of fortresses, and a God which his fathers did not know. He shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things." Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for grain. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen and many ships. And he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand, Adam, Moab, and prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of, the, of Egypt. Also the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and from the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with great fury and destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. Eventually, everything that the enemy and wicked tries to do will be destroyed. But he is attempting to destroy as much as possible. The enemy flatters forsakers of the covenant, backsliders. Only the purify will know the God, their God and do great exploits using the divine wisdom and understanding to rescue many, bringing them out into the purification process so that they may be sanctified and servants to the king. 
in Joel chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Joel 3. In verse 1, Joel chapter 3, purification process, welcome to the furnace of affliction. Is everybody there? Well, hurry up. <laughs> it's on page, uh, okay. Joel 3, verse 1, For behold, the day in those days and at that time when I bring back the captivities or captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. Did he bring back the captives of Jerusalem? Uh, that have been taken captive globally. Yes, they've been coming back for years since Israel became a nation in 1948. They're still coming back. In fact, we've purchased many, uh, donated to organizations that purchase flights for people to come out of Russia and so forth, going back to their homelands. This ministry has. So if you've sold, you participated in it. Rescuing people from Russia and other countries coming back to Israel that are Jews. And I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will also gather uh, and, and I will enter into what? Judgment with them on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They also have divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people. Have given a boy as payment for a harlot. This is child abduction. And sold a girl for wine that they may drink. That's child abduction. Indeed, what have you to do with me? O Tyre and Sidon and all the coasts of Philistia, will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you have sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will ri ri rise, raise them out of the place to which you have sold them. And I will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. And they will sell them to the Sabians, to the people far off. For the Lord has spoken. Proclaim among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be awakened and come up to the jail, a valley of Jehoshaphat. And there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. How many of y'all know God is judging every nation right now? Put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Why? We are entering the greatest harvest ever. And it will continue to increase and expand and expand and expand. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full, the vats, the vats overflow. For their wickedness is great. Multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision. Many are in the valley of decision right now, globally. Why? Because of what's going on. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Are you the children of Israel? Yes. 
Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll close here. So the purification process is to bring us more and more into the likeness of Jesus. Amen. Anything that's not of Jesus, God wants to remove. Verse 1, therefore it says, be what? Imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Are you a sweet-smelling aroma to God? That depends how long you've been cooking. See, if you jump off the fire, man, you ain't smelling no good. Amen. I think he likes it crisp. <laughs> Hallelujah. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. This is why people are going through the purification process. If there's anything in this in your life, God wants to get rid of it. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were already once darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And they have no fellowship with unfruitful works of what? Darkness, but rather what? Expose them. So the, in the process of purification, you're going to be able to see more stuff that you need to get rid of or expose. Things that you may be associating with you didn't even realize are wicked. Remember, wicked has no understanding. The wicked don't understand. Don't fall from a place of righteousness to wickedness because you'll lose understanding. Is everybody Okay. In verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't drink the booze from man. Hello. Don't be drunk with this deception, dissipation, di something. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Don't take dope. Makes you stupid. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submit to one another in fear and reverence to the Lord. Listen, there's a lot of things that are happening right now, and I'm just going to let you know that there's going to be a part we will most likely fall into a place of darkness. But it won't be evil darkness for us. Amen? And there's going to be a lack of communication. There's going to be a lack of all kinds of things that are going to happen. It's going to be like the lights went out. And great Stuff is going to happen to the wicked. I don't know if you know or not, but uh, we saw yesterday that, because we remember right now that the uh, alliance, God's army in the physical, 
is infiltrating places. So we know that they've infiltrated because now that it's a declared war, amen, we're in a war. And, and so in that, it gives the president more authority over communications, TV, and everything else. So yesterday, so things were coming up on certain programs, and it said, what did it say again? We are with you. All of a sudden in the corner, in white letters, it said, we are with you. And certain programs that came up, we are with you. People were taking pictures of it and posted it. Why? Because they infiltrated those places. Google's been infiltrated. Or the, people would have been thrown off all the stuff that's coming up now. A lot of places have been infiltrated. And God is continuing to use this president to infiltrate all over the world. All over. We're already invading places in Europe. We already have thousands, I think 38,000, 40,000 troops communicated together through the other alliances and getting these children rescued. It's all over the world. It's happening. So we got to keep praying for it. You got to ask God to target every location where they've been taken and called to struck the fire down, destroying their organizations, their communications, their satellites, their military, their ports and portals. We got to destroy every part of it. We got to call a destructive fire down. Remember, there's two witnesses going to show up. And what are they going to do? Call destructive fire down. They're going to plague. They're going to do all kinds of things. This is what's going to happen in Israel. We are the forerunners of the two witnesses. And we are also the forerunners of the return of the Lord. We must take our authority and who we are. It says imitate God. Amen? Imitate him. Imitate his care. Imitate Christ. He cursed the tree and it withered. We are now the hands and feet of the Lord, yielding by to his spirit through the anointing of Christ. But in the purification process, we become more like him, become more boldness. Not weak, but strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not our own. What a time we are in right now. And I'm telling you, many people are running for their lives. But we're running to the life giver. Hiding in the secret place with him. Letting him feed us. Learning. Continuing to learning, being fed, being strengthened, worshiping. Not cowering in the home. Not hiding underneath your bed, waiting for it to pass by. You can come out of the closet now. Get deliverance. Get freedom. Amen. Only in him can all things be accomplished. Nothing else. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been empowered and bring boldness to your people, bringing us out of a lukewarm state into a hot state. So we're going to be zealous for your word, be zealous for your presence, be zealous for your glory because you're faithful and true and there is none like you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.